Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about vapor compression cycle. In this cycle, there are mainly four components. The first one is compressor. Then we have condenser. Next is expansion valve. And then finally an evaporator. In this cycle, first of all, vapor refrigerant is fed into the compressor. This vapor refrigerant is at low pressure and low temperature. Just to repeat again, this is a very important property of the vapor refrigerant which enters the compressor. This vapor refrigerant has to be at low pressure and low temperature. Once this refrigerant enters the compressor, the job of compressor is to compress this refrigerant. As a result, its pressure and temperature increases. So the refrigerant which comes out of the compressor is vapor in form, but it has high pressure and high temperature. This vapor refrigerant at high pressure and high temperature then enters the condenser coil. While it is moving in the condenser coil, it rejects heat. So the role of condenser coil is to cool down the vapor refrigerant. The refrigerant now comes out of the condenser. Because of heat rejection in the condenser, the vapor refrigerant gets converted to liquid refrigerant and its properties also gets changed. Now it is at a lower temperature. The pressure can be high or it can be medium also. But it's important to note that the temperature has decreased because of heat rejection in the condenser coil. This liquid refrigerant now enters the expansion valve. The function of expansion valve is to expand the liquid refrigerant. Because of this, its pressure falls. And now the liquid refrigerant has low pressure and low temperature. But just to note, the state of the refrigerant remains the same. It is still in liquid phase. This liquid refrigerant, which is at a low pressure and low temperature, now enters the evaporator coil. The job of evaporator is to take the heat from the conditioned space and give it to the refrigerant. Because of the heat absorption by the refrigerant when it passes through the evaporator coil, it's, it gets boiled. But to make sure, the temperature does not change. However, the phase changes. This liquid refrigerant now gets converted to vapor refrigerant. So the refrigerant which enters the evaporator coil is liquid at low pressure and low temperature and the refrigerant which comes out of the evaporator coil is vapor in phase and it has low temperature and low pressure. In this entire cycle, it is very important to note that the evaporator coil has to be placed in a space which needs to be conditioned or cooled and the condenser coil has to be placed outside of the conditioned space for heat rejection. On further, on further analyzing the cycle, it can be noted that the upper part is a high pressure side because the liquid refrigerant or wafer refrigerant in this side of the cycle is at higher pressure. However, on the other side, the refrigerant is at low pressure. So the cycle can also be classified into two sides. One is the higher pressure side and the other is lower pressure side. Unit of refrigeration. Any physical quantity has to be measured in some units. In the same way, refrigeration is also measured in some units. So in this part, we'll talk about the units and the terms associated with refrigeration. First one is rating. Rating for refrigeration indicates the rate of removal of heat. 
So if the rating is high, the rate of removal of heat by this system will be more as compared to any other system with a lower rating. So as a whole, we can say rating gives us the idea of how fast a system is able to cool a space. Higher the rating, faster the cooling. Unit. The unit of refrigeration is expressed in terms of tons of refrigeration. For example, unit of length can be meters, centimeters, unit of mass can be kg, grams. In the same way, unit of refrigeration is tons of refrigeration. To understand this unit in more detail, we'll talk about one ton of refrigeration. What does it mean? It is the amount of refrigeration effect produced during uniform melting of one ton of ice at zero degree centigrade to water at zero degree centigrade in 24 hours. Now this can be a little overwhelming because of so many values used in the definition. So we'll break it down into smaller pieces and try to understand each of the component used in the definition one by one. To start with, let's imagine a situation where there is one ton of ice. In order to convert this ice to water, there is some amount of heat that is to be supplied. If this heat is supplied at a faster rate, ice will melt faster. And if the heat is supplied at a slower rate, ice will take more time to convert to water. Let's say there's a fixed value of rate of heat transfer to the ice. In this case, ice gets converted to water completely in 24 hours. So this value of heat transfer rate is called one ton of refrigeration. One very important point to note here is that one ton does not mean the amount of heat. It means the amount of heat per unit time. We can convert this one ton of refrigeration into SI system. So in SI system, it is approximately equal to 3.5 kilowatts. And in imperial system, it is equal to 12,000 British thermal unit per hour. COP of refrigeration cycles. To understand COP, first we need to understand a situation. In this situation, there is a cold reservoir, which is the heat source. For example, Let's consider the inside of a refrigerator. This can be considered as a cold reservoir. This needs to be maintained at a lower temperature than the surrounding. In order to do so, there has to be continuous removal of heat from this cold reservoir to the outer space, which is at a higher temperature. Now, because we know the law of thermodynamics, heat cannot flow from a body at lower temperature to a body at higher temperature on its own. So there has to be a device used in order to achieve this non-spontaneous process. This device is called refrigerator. As we have already studied, in refrigerator, the compressor does the work. Once it starts functioning, heat starts getting extracted from inside of the refrigerator to the outer space, which is known as hot reservoir. And because heat flows finally to this space, so it is also called as heat sink. Just to note, it is at a higher temperature. So in this situation, the space outside the refrigerator can be considered as heat sink. Now we are in a position to define COP. Before we do that, it stands for coefficient of performance. So what is finally COP? 
it is the ratio of heat removed from the coal reservoir which is inside the refrigerator to the work done to remove the heat as already mentioned this work done is the work done by compressor so the cop is the ratio of heat removed from the cold reservoir to the work done to remove the heat higher the value of cop better the performance of a system in refrigeration so a high performing system will have high value of cop